We are on the board with an absolute dinky bluegill. Hey, a little bit bigger bluegill. Still tiny. There's another one. I think there's a bunch of dinky bluegill right here. That one went for the top jig as well. And that one hit the bottom jig. Good afternoon from the lake. I just got out here a few minutes ago, and as you just saw, I've been putting the double jig rig to use on some dinky bluegill. I'm having some fun with it, but unfortunately I just broke it off because I don't think I tied a very good knot. That's okay. I think I'm gonna go ahead and rig up another one, and I really have no agenda. I just wanna catch fish. Any species is fine with me. I'm just gonna have some fun, throw the double jig rig around, and then, you know, if I get bored with that, I've got four other ultralights with me, so we've got plenty of fish to catch, and I'm excited to do so. So without further ado, let's get back to it. I'm gonna go ahead and rig up a couple of mule minnow 1.2s on 180th ounce mule jigs this is straight up micro double jig rig all right step number one we just take the line and go through the first jig i'm going to bring it up here and have a bunch of tag end obviously because we're doing two jigs then i just double back my line both uh, the tag end as well as the main line and we form a loop and then i just pass this jig through three times i honestly learned this knot from John Dalton over at Creek Fishing Adventures. I've talked about him in the past. We have a very similar style of fishing. And uh, so big shout out to him for teaching me this knot. All right, and then we just have like a little loop right there. So now that we got that first one tied, I'm just gonna use my tag end and then I'm gonna tie whatever knot I want to the bottom jig. So in this case, I'm gonna do a polymer knot. That's just one of my go-to knots. I actually left a lot more space than I was planning on. That's probably about 16 inches between the two jigs. Um, but on the top, I've got chartreuse. On the bottom, we have white. I was kind of paying attention to which jig was getting bit more before, but we're gonna just go ahead and restart our test. And we're just gonna try to figure out if they have a strong preference on color. That's one of the values of this rig. I've talked about it in the past is, you know, uh, if you use two different colors at once, that can allow you to determine which color they like best pretty quick. If I'm gonna make a prediction, I think they're just gonna eat the back jig a little bit more, but I don't necessarily think it's because of the color. That's a bigger fish. Oh, that's not a bigger fish. It's a really small fish, but it's a bass that decided he wanted to pull hard. A little tiny bass, and he ate the bottom jig. Like I was getting ready to say, it's really, I think they're gonna come after the bottom jig more often, just because it just stays a little bit closer to their face. That feels better. There we go. What's this gonna be? I hope it's a crappie. I would love a crappie today. Bet this is a bass though. It's definitely a bass. That's a bass. I wish this was a crappie. That'd be a nice crappie. That ain't no crappie. Oh, God bless. She's pulling. She's pulling. Oh gosh, is it a bass or is it a pike? Is it a, that's a bass. Hey oh. All right, well it ate the white one, so. Oh boy. It's a nice bass. Especially when you're talking about a little 1.2. Oh, it's got a lamprey on it, dude. I've actually never caught a bass with a lamprey on it. Look at that spooky thing. Oh my gosh, that's weird. I don't like those things. Look at that scary looking critter. Oh my gosh. Ugh, look at that nasty thing. There you go. I don't know if you're supposed to take these off, but oh, that's spooky. I don't like that. I'm gonna grab me some pliers. Ah, ah, he's in my kayak. Oh my gosh, he's on my seat. Okay, not cool. Okay, okay, one sec. Not okay, not okay. Get out of here. Oh my gosh, ew. It's like a little snake, bro. Oh, oh my gosh. This guy's got a wound now. That thing's crazy. I'm gonna get him back. Hey, buddy. I honestly don't know if I should have taken that thing off or left it on. I don't know what the best uh, option is. That thing was scary. The way it swam is like some sort of weird horror film, dude. I do not ever want to see another one of those things in my life, let alone one coming after me because that thing's weird, dude. Those things are ugly. <laughs> I think there's some species of lamprey that are actually native, and then there's some that are like straight up invasive, and you don't want those around. And I, I don't know the differences between them, and I don't know how to identify them. I'm not like an expert. I've never, that's like the like second one I've seen in my life. Um, so I didn't really do anything with it, I just threw it back, but. God, that was weird. Weird fish, man. Weird little critter. So far, between the chartreuse and the white jig, I'm two for two on the white jig, so um, we'll see. You know why I think I uh, am spooked by that lamprey is because its face is like legit like a demogorgon from uh, Stranger Things. For those of you who watch Stranger Things, you know what I'm talking about, man. They're spooky, and so that thing's basically just a demogorgon. Hey, I just missed a little tiny bluegill on the bottom jig three for three on white. Can't really count that because I missed it, but still, he chose the white jig instead of the chartreuse. There's one. Another little bass. Hey, he ate the chartreuse jig though. 
There we go. Okay, two on the bottom one and one on the top. I'm not gonna count that missed bluegill because I didn't land it. All right, chill out, bud. Dink. Hey, went for the bottom jig. I don't care what the size of the fish is at this point. I'm just wanting to learn. It's kind of fun. I don't know why this is fun to me, but just uh, trying to figure out which jig works better. And uh, so far we're three to one, bottom versus top. I probably should at some point switch them, do the white on top and the chartreuse on the bottom to see if it's more of a placement thing or if it's truly a color thing. Right under the kayak. Hey, bigger gills are out deeper. Four to one, bottom versus top. Not a very big gill, but bigger than the, the, the few I've caught today, so. Another one on the bottom jig. Okay, we're up to, ah, ah. Okay, that's one way to release a fish. We're up to five to one, bottom versus top. I'll get to 10 total fish, and then we're gonna switch the jigs. There's one. Another one on the bottom. Six to one, bottom to top, my friends. I need to put this all in an Excel spreadsheet. Maybe put a couple graphs together for you guys to observe. He's got it. Oh, there's a little bit better one. Not big, but a little bit chunkier. And again, on the white jig. Hey, bud. All right. I'm going to call that seven on the bottom, one on top. Another one. Hey, on the top. There you go. Good. Out of way, chartreuse. Play a little catch up now, would you? All right. Seven on bottom, two on top. There we go. Hey, Chartreuse trying to make a comeback out here. Seven to three. Okay, I am going to re-rig, and then we are going to fish with the Chartreuse on bottom and the white on top, and we're gonna see. There we have it. We've got white on top and Chartreuse on bottom, and I'd say the gap is about 16 inches again, so I did a good job rigging that up. Now, like I said, seven fish on the white last time, three on the Chartreuse. So now the question is, will those numbers be somewhat in line, or is it going to be completely different? My theory is that we're gonna be around seven to eight fish on the Chartreuse this time, and then the other ones are gonna be white. But that's what we're doing this for, this is fun. I don't know why I'm having so much fun with this, but I really am. I, this kind of stuff is super interesting to me. Uh, the reality is I probably need to do more tests to really get a true amount of data. Like I said, I should probably plot all this in Excel, do this like 20 times and see if we can come up with a consistent pattern. But I'm not gonna do that because I just don't want to do that. Um, so let's get back to fishing because that's really why I'm here. I mean, I just want to catch fish. I don't really care what the numbers tell me at the end of the day, um, but it is interesting. Okay, okay, I'm rambling. Oh, oh, a little bit better one. As I suspected on the bottom jig. Now I do have to note, this fish is blind in one eye. Can we even count this? I'm counting it, I don't care. All right, probably my best bluegill. It's funny that he's half blind. One on the chartreuse. I'm literally right next to a bunch of bluegill. They're all nipping at it. There, he got the bottom one. <laughs> I watched that all happen. There's a ton of bluegill underneath me. And uh, two for two on chartreuse. Man, there's a whole pile of them down there. I'm going to kind of skip over those fish. They're a bunch of dinks. This is called making a stupid cast. But hey, we'll see what happens. There's one. Oh, it's a... Eh, what is this? Whoa. I've never caught one of these before. That's a golden shiner. That's sick. That makes me so happy. This is actually, I don't think I've ever caught one before, and it's not all that uncommon, but for me, it's new, so I'm really excited by that. All right, well, that's interesting, and he ate the bottom jig. All right, see you, buddy. Cool. <gasps> Big bass, holy smokes. He was, like, coming after it, I swear. Oh, my gosh. Eat it. Eat it. Daggummit. I caught a dang bluegill when I wanted to catch that big bass. He ate the top jig, though. All right, three on the chartreuse, one on the white. I wanna catch another golden shiner, guys. I, I'm getting so distracted right now. I'm around a lot of fish. So I'm just like straight up, squirrel, squirrel. It's another, it's another, yes. Another golden shiner. Smaller than the first one, but sweet. I have now caught two of these fish. Trophies. All right. And on the chartreuse, four to one. Four to one chartreuse to white. 
Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Golly, he's not that big, but he fought really hard. And it's a bass on the chartreuse. Okay, we are now five to one chartreuse to white. I'm honestly super surprised that I've never caught any golden shiners before. There's a little bit better feeling fish. No, he's not all that big. <laughs> he wanted to be big. And uh, that would be another largemouth, this time on the white jig. Five to two, is the white gonna make a comeback? I doubt it, but it might, you never know. And on the bottom jig again, six to two. Man, we might end up with the exact same numbers as before. That'd be kind of funny. There's one. Ooh, uh-oh. Mr. Bass wants to go down in this grass. Rot row rot row This is where this rod being a little bit heavier may not be the worst thing, but that two-pound monofilament is not exactly ideal. I can't tell which jig he's on. I cannot tell. Is he on the shark? He's on the white. Oh, Ethan, you stupid, stupid idiot. Arg. Daggummit. Now he just kicked off and he's got a jig in his face. The good news is that tiny hook is gonna come out with no issues. Well, now I have to re-rig up the exact same colors to continue my test. So that would technically be, I am gonna count that fish as a catch because that was stupidity on my end. So that would be um, five to three, or no, no, no. Six to three chartreuse to white. So now I gotta rig up the double jig rig just for one more fish. Yep, I called it. I re-rigged that whole setup just for one more dinky bluegill, but there you, why? There you got it. There you have it, my friends, there you have it. Well, I'll tell you what, that's kind of funny how that worked out. 70%, my friends, 70% of the time you catch fish on the bottom jig, 30% of the time you catch fish on the top jig. That's what we learned today. Now, obviously that is not necessarily going to be the case always because there are probably times and conditions where color makes a far bigger difference. But today it didn't feel like color really made a difference at all. It felt like the bottom jig was just the, the one that was gonna get bit more. And again, I think my theory is that basically that's gonna be the one that sinks quicker. It's gonna be in their face more often. So I feel like they eat that because it's closest to them. At the end of the day, pretty much all fish species want to expend the least amount of energy possible to to eat that meal. So they're not gonna swim just a little bit further because of a different color. Well, at least in these conditions, they won't. But in some conditions, they might. So maybe I should test this again in the future. This was actually kind of fun for me. That being said, I think I'm actually gonna keep exploring. I'm gonna go check out some different parts of this lake that I haven't fished yet. And I'm actually gonna make a separate video because I figure, you know, by this point, I've caught a bunch of fish, I've had a good time, but I wanna pick up one of the other rods and kind of focus on something else. So that's what I'm gonna do. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to stay tuned for the next video. We'll catch you next time.